Hello, this is Kishore Borra and in this module I am going to demonstrate a well-known and commonly used design pattern called factory design pattern. You can follow my personal blog at kborra.wordpress.com. In this video, we are going to have a look at various aspects of factory pattern, namely a simple factory, a factory method and an abstract factory. While discussing each of these various aspects of uh, factory design pattern, uh, I'll also I'll also try to uh, provide the guidelines. Uh, I, I'll also try to show you the guidelines provided by Gang of Four with respect to this particular pattern. And uh, I'll try to make this presentation as simple and straightforward as possible. Let's start by looking at the agenda. So in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, we are going to go through and understand what is a factory pattern and uh, how do we realize uh, the need for pa factory pattern. As a developer, it is very important uh, to realize the, the situation or the scenario where exactly we can make use of the factory pattern. Many people know the definition of factory pattern and they know some sample codes, but I know uh, it doesn't make uh, much sense unless we really understand and realize where exactly we should use the factory pattern. Then once we understand uh, the problem first and uh, realize the need for factory pattern, then we are going to study three different uh, types of, uh, um, three different aspects of factory pattern. We will start by creating a simple factory pattern. And later we will go ahead and study factory method and then we'll make it little complicated and go one step ahead and see uh, abstract factory as well and I'm going to demonstrate each of these simple factory simple factory and uh, factory method and abstract factory with the help of uh, demos and at the end uh, we will conclude on our learnings uh, under summary okay let's uh, get started so when you look at uh, the term uh, uh, factory pattern, uh, the term it itself is uh, uh, it implies that you know it is going to create or produce something for us. So what exactly the factory pattern is going to create or produce? This pattern is going to create or produce objects. It helps us to solve problems which are associated with the the, the software architecture with respect to creation of objects. So in order to understand uh, the factory pattern and why is it called a creational pattern and what problems is it going to solve for us, uh, it's better if we take an example and then try to understand the problem. So here I'm taking the example of a shopping mall and uh, basically uh, the customers are the prime focus uh, for any mall and the more, uh, the more they attract the customers, the more revenue that they can generate. So when you look at uh, mm, Customers typically uh, shopping malls they gen they divide uh, they look at customers you know they 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 will they will have a different perspective of the customers that are coming to them time and again. When you look at uh, various types of customers, you will have loyal customers. So these are these are you know they represent not more than twenty percentage of uh, the customer base of any uh, shopping mall, but uh, they make up more than fifty percentage of their sales. And when you look at a discount customer they shop they come to the shopping mall quite frequently and uh, they make their decisions based on the discounts that are available at that particular point in time and then the next set are impulse customers they do not have they do not have buying a particular item at the top of their to-do list but you know they come into the store on a whim and they will purchase what seems good at that point in time and the next one are need based customer they have a specific intention to buy a particular type of an item and that's only when only then they will turn up to the shopping mall and then wandering customers they have no specific need or desire in mind when they come into the store rather they just want a sense of experience and you know sense of uh, social socializing with people or community so these are different types of customers. Now what exactly happens is if a shopping mall is so serious about uh, growing its business, uh, so they need to focus uh, their effort on the loyal customers and uh, they should merchandise their store to leverage the impulse shopper. 
so on so forth you know it, it all depends on how you strategize your business and how how you will uh, um, what kind of uh, you know, business uh, intelligence applications or uh, you know software that you engage uh, to help you grow your business so when the moment you bring in some software components into picture so what exactly happen is when you classify them into different customers there will be a um, need for uh, the the applications the software applications or the the uh, the front desk staff uh, staff using the, the software applications so they should be able to identify the type of the customer only then they will be able to provide the relevant updates and give proper discounts and benefits according to the type of uh, customer that uh, uh, you know that particular person has been identified uh, with respect to the shopping mall which means what happens here is based on the customer type the applications need to create new customer objects so in the sense let's 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 go to the the maybe go to this slide and see see what is happening is if you look at uh, the um, if you look at uh, this client code the client application code so you will you know uh, so if you look at this uh, if he is a loyal customer they are creating a new loyal customer and if he is a discount customer they are creating a new discount customer and if he is an impulse customer they are creating a new impulse uh, customer the same is with the need need based customers in the sense what is happening is the client application is deciding what type of customer he is and based on that it is creating an object but if you look at this code there are two issues you will find a lot of uh, scattered new keywords and imagine tomorrow you wanted to add one more type of customer so what exactly happened the moment you decide to add one more uh, type of customer you need to you can't do it without informing the client applications which means you need to update your client code and you need to recompile your client code then only uh, you would be successful in adding a new type of customer to the system so that is uh, the second issue so there are two issues the first issue is there are a lot of uh, scattered new keywords mm. it may it may not just be in one file it could be spread across you know various files throughout the system you might be creating these customers across many modules mm, within the within the application that uh, is running in your mod and the second problem is the client application should be aware of all the um, you know all the customer types okay so uh, yeah uh, because of uh, this as i mentioned uh, you need to recompile your client code so how do we get away with this problem this is where the factory pattern would come into picture so if you go back to the previous slide and have a look at this uh, okay how do i realize how do you realize the need for the factory pattern so if you want to there are certain things that you know um, one can achieve with this factory pattern mm -hmm. and and uh, if you want if you want to separate the creation of objects from the representation of an object then uh, you are good to go for a factory pattern and if you ever realize that you ended up writing a lot of if else blocks when deciding which concrete class to create in your client applications which means uh, you know you are you are all set for using factory pattern same is with a uh, um, lot of finding a lot of switch statements uh, which decides the creation of a concrete class so if you are unsure which concrete implementation of an interface to return then then also you are set to go for factory pattern so let's uh, now now that we looked at uh, the, the the key points uh, which would make us feel that you know we should use factory pattern and let's look at the code as well let's look at the code okay so now so let me show you this so i have a project here so if you look at um, this file so i have uh, um, I have a customer type enum and uh, there are various types of customers and for each customer I have created a class 
and each class has got an ID, first name, last name, and uh, there is another class called address which uh, captures the address information of the customer, and then the customer type, and there is a print method, and there is a there is a default constructor in which we are uh, specifying the customer type. So if you keep looking at uh, the other customers, you will find the same thing. Okay. And then if you look at loyal customer, it's just the same. Okay, and then you have need based customers as well. So I have another wandering customer as well. So there are different types of customers. Now let's look at the, the main class. So this is what I was showing you. So now what happens is, so if I run this application, I will be prompting the user to enter the customer type and once he enters the customer type based on that the client application is going to so the client application is going to uh, create the respective object let's assume that uh, the client application as of now does not uh, have this wandering customer now I wanted to add this wandering customer so if I add this uh, new customer so I can I can just uncomment this and then so now I assume that I have added some new code to the client application which means now I need to recompile this client application first time I, I will be adding the details about the the new customer and I will incorporate the logic in my switch uh, uh, switch logic or if else block logic and then uh, accordingly I will write code to create a new customer okay but what happened here uh, it it might uh, adding a new customer seemed like a small change you know but actually it is violation of open close principle which states that our classes should be open for extension but closed for modification and what we did here to add a new customer we have changed the switch statement and hence we need to recompile which is clearly violation of uh, an open close principle okay so this is the problem so now I, I hope you understand you understood the problem okay so that is what I uh, meant by saying if you end up writing a lot of if else blocks when deciding which concrete class to create or if you end up writing a lot of switch statements when deciding which concrete class to create and mostly if this happens on the the, the client applications okay and uh, as a result uh, of if you want to add any new concrete classes to the system and you realize that you know you need to recompile your client application without which it won't work then that is the time for you to segregate the code and introduce the factory pattern okay so now now let me uh, show you how can we get rid of these two problems a lot of scattered new keywords and the client application uh, is aware of all customer types okay so look at this now look at this diagram what we would do is now you you already looked at the discount customer the loyal customer and the impulse customer each one is a separate class now what I'm doing is I created an interface called I customer and this I customer this I customer uh, the, all these uh, all these customer classes are, are implementing this interface okay and also now in earlier in the previous uh, uh, code sample that I showed you the client is responsible for creating taking the proper input from either from a configuration file or from a database or from the user input and then it is responsible for creating the appropriate um, type of the object but now okay but uh, but now what we are doing is we are delegating that responsibility to a new um, class called customer factory class so now we will end up creating a new class called customer factory class okay and once we create uh, um, the customer factory class he would be tasked uh, with the responsibility of creating an appropriate uh, concrete class so this person this factory is aware of all concrete classes okay and the client is aware of the interface so as a result now what happens now since you introduced a customer factory which is going to take care of the creation of the objects 
now you will not find a lot you, you will not find the need for writing a lot of new keywords in your client code okay and uh, the second thing is that now that the client is uh, aware of uh, uh, the i interface and also factory is aware of the concrete in, uh, concrete um, classes there is no need for client to be aware of each of these uh, you know individual customer classes which means uh, the the dependency between client and the concrete classes has been broken the client tomorrow if you wanted to add a new class over here all that you just need to do is uh, let this class implement uh, i customer interface and that's it you are good to go and you can make the code the code changes inside your uh, customer factory business logic but that would not have any impact on the um, client client applications need not uh, to be recompiled at all I, have, I hope i made my point clear i repeat that by introducing a customer factory customer factory class the we have uh, delegated the creation of the customer objects from client to customer factory and this was possible because uh, client is aware of uh, the i customer interface and we have implemented uh, we have ensured that each of the customer class is implementing the i customer interface and because of that even the the in the dependency of client to know each of the customer classes is also taken out so so these are the two things uh, you know uh, that will be achieved by means of implementing a simple factory pattern okay so now let me show you the code let me show you the code so if you look at this So now what I did was now I created a now I created a customer interface okay and then I created various uh, classes it's just the same each one is implementing I customer interface so you have discount customer you have uh, impulse customer and you have loyal customer you have need based customers okay and you have wandering customers so all the customers each of them are implementing i customer interface okay and the next thing is we have written a new class called customer factory okay and then inside that now we have added a method called create instance which would return i customer interface so all that you need to do uh, is just uh, call customer factory dot create instance and pass the customer type from your client applications therefore uh, this customer factory will take the responsibility of creating the concrete object and giving the reference back to the customer um, the client applications so this is what the same code which previously we have seen in uh, client application has been moved to customer factory now okay and if you look at uh, the client application now it is just simple so now we are asking the we are asking the end user to give the customer type and then now i am converting that into an integer i am type casting it to customer type and then simply i will say i customer customer equals to customer factory dot create instance of type so based on the type then you get the object back so now let me run this and let me give say one so discount customer so let me run again and say three need based customer so so this is what is um, called a simple factory pattern okay so here you could see that we have uh, various customers and each of them are implementing i customer interface and we have some proper uh, definition for i customer interface and now the customer factory will have a create instance method which would uh, which can uh, which can generate um, which can create any object uh, which is implementing the i customer interface and this is the the code for uh, the, the client application whatever i just uh, explained to you